Welcome, this is 49E2 and our title is Charging an Insulator, Charging an Isolated Conductor and Charging a Conductor. So three different uh, examples and here we have them and I'm showing the insulating bit as, as a brownish color and I'm showing the conducting bit as, as a whitish thing. So here we have a rod and we've basically it could be a, a glass rod that we've rubbed with a material like silk or it could be an ebonite rod or whatever. There's certain combinations of materials which when you rub them, one of them likes electrons more than the other and so it becomes negatively charged and the, the other partner becomes positively charged. So let's say we've done this and we have some electrostatic positive charges stuck on this rod and then what happens is I come along to this insulator and I just spread, I just rub physically this rod against the, the insulating sphere and what happens is that some of the charges get transferred to the insulating sphere. Because it's an insulator the charges cannot move. Char insulators do not let charges move and so the charges stay where they are. From a demonstration point of view as a physics teacher this is a bit of a nightmare actually because you have a very strong field around one bit where you have a lot of charges and then you have very weak fields around the rest of the sphere so the behavior is different on one side than on the other and so from a demonstration point of view because you can't see where the charges are it's a it's a bit awful actually so this tends not to be used for physics demonstrations it is actually used actually in technology if you think about it if I want to um, define a certain region on an insulator so for example let's take a piece of paper and if I can spray charge on here forming a letter E and then I sprinkle oh I don't know a powder of black ink it will tend to stick where the charges are and not stick in other regions so now I have a whole bunch of let's call it toner in this region and then I heat it to fix the toner into the paper and I have basically the the beginnings of photocopying or laser printing this is basically very nice and it relies on the fact that the charge cannot flow from one pace place on the piece of paper to another it relies on this insulation property of the of the material it's wonderful so what is a a problem for a physics demonstration is wonderful for technology it's better if you want to demonstrate this type of behavior charges attracting or repelling each other for example if you take again this charged rod and then you apply it to an conductor that is isolated from ground so we do have an insulator at the bottom just to stop these charges from escaping and what happens is when the charges are applied they don't want to be near each other and so they spread out evenly over the surface of the metallic sphere and so you get a uniform behavior on both sides it's very nice on one side and the other side it behaves the same and so we tend to use this type of apparatus for uh, um, demonstrations now you know yes I can char I can rub this rod against this uh, metallic sphere and uh, it will uh, uh, the charge can be transferred if I did not have this metallic if I did not have this insulating base then what would happen is if I rub the rod against this grounded conductor in, in Britain we'd say an earthed conductor then what happens is that the charges when they're transferred see that oh they can actually move to this huge other object called the planet and it's a relatively easy path and so what they do is they escape from each other and they go to ground and so you lose the charge on them they just escape so three different possibilities um,
True or false, charges stay put on the surface of an insulator. That's true. We like insulators because they do not let charges move. So that's true. True or false, charges separate on the surface of an isolated conductor. That's true. They want to get similar charges, want to get as far away from each other as they can. And so they spread out pretty evenly. There's an actual interesting thing where if I have a conductor that's shaped like that where there's a point here, you'll find that you will get more charges, be they positive or negative, it doesn't matter. You get the charges tending to concentrate on the pointy bits because of electric field effects, but otherwise the charges kind of spread out. And then true or false charges run to ground through a grounded conductor. And yes, if I have a conductor, I actually show this going to ground by that symbol. And what happens is if I happen to put a charge on here, it basically is going to run to ground. If I put several charges on here, they'll run to ground. One of them will run to ground. It'll push the other one away. Cool. So there we have it.